Tom here from Learning Systems, and we're going to talk about Synology and specifically about their drives or the compatibility list. Now, whenever I do a review of not one of these low-end systems, but one of the higher-end systems, such as the FS3410, and I have a link down below for that review, I bring up to make sure people are aware and you can check their compatibility list prior to purchase. So this is not anything that's a surprise if you're doing your research on these, aware that it does require specific drives. And I say specific meaning they have Synology drives that they prefer you to use in their flash station. I say prefer, perhaps that's not a strong enough word. They will give you an error message if you you don't have those drives in there. We're going to show that error message and how that looks later in the video so you can understand and talk about some of the, well, why I don't think it's a great idea they did it that way, but we'll get to that in a moment. And yes, you can use the drives, but well, that's later in the video. When it comes to these and these smaller units, that's not the case. They allow, well, a variety of different drives to be slid into these particular units. Now I, you know, have a uh, currently a Seagate Iron Wolf four terabyte in this one. Actually, I got two of them in here. I got a pair of drives in here. And these smaller units, I don't ever see Synology switching around and going, nope, we only are going to allow you to use these very narrow list of specific drives sold by Synology. Now, I bring it up as someone who talks to Synology, talks to their engineers, has good conversations because we're a reseller of them. We do a lot of Synology solutions. And all the smaller ones, the more home user or even small business targeted ones like these little Synologies, I don't really see that as a thing that Synology is going to change. I get the fear that people have because when you have a product you like and companies tend to figure out ways to make more money by um, figuring out ways to exclude you from other options and force you to buy from them. But when it comes to some of their high-end market and where Synology is going with that is they want a very predictable performance profile. They're looking for the ability to update firmware to provide a very reliable platform for the enterprise. Therefore, higher end models like the flash station have a requirement of their drives on their approved list, which yes, I wish it was bigger, but this is one of the reasons I bring it up early on in the video when I was doing the review, because I like people to be aware of this as one of the requirements. It's just something you factor in whether or not you're going to buy it, because that's the way that particular model works. That is the requirement for that model. But nonetheless, I don't share that same fear that Synology is going to do that to the lower end models. So I'll leave that part at that. But now let's jump into the demo to show you what happens when you use an incompatible drive, because that is the real question. Now we're going to first start here on the Synology product compatibility list and look up the Flash Station 3410. And as you scroll down here, you'll see, well, a more limiting list of drives of only the Synology Enterprise ones. And that's it. That's the whole list. So there's not a lot of different options for this model, but like I said, you can look up and you type in the model number, you put in HD SSD and you find devices and they'll list them out. But if you do the same thing for a model that's even a little bit kind of high end, like the DS1621 XS Plus, you'll see quite a few drives on the list, different Seagates, Toshiba's, Western Digital drives that are on their list. Now, these drives are going to be the more common ones. And like I said, these are their desktop models where they don't have that same, you know, stick to it. We need these high end performance profiles, but it's easy enough to check before you buy any Synology. So just go to their Synology product competitive list. Do a search, look up the drives, see if you're narrowed down to that compatibility list. Now you can still use drives sometimes outside that list, but you know, sticking with that list, and that list got a good variety in there, is going to be ones that Synology's taking the time to test with. So I think that's a very good place to start with them. But let's start over here and talk about what happens when you put a non-compatible drive in here. And we have this warning. The system is in warning status. All right, what's in warning status? It says go to the storage manager. All right, so let's open that up and we see the overview. We see a drive. It must have failed. Actually, what we did was swap the drive. We can click on the drive here and it says unverified, but allocation status normal. Because we actually took and resilvered the drive, put it in the pool, made it active. And yes, that will work. But this drive is not on their list. This is just a crucial one terabyte SSD that we put in here. And it works, but doesn't have the verified status. So we have that error message to contend with. When we look here, it tells me the storage pools at risk. The storage pool contains one or more unverified drives. Using unverified drives may affect system reliability and stability. You can check the drive info to identify the unverified drives and replace them with compatible drives. Now, here's the good news. Right now, it's fine, except the fact that Synology is unhappy about it. I wish there was a way I could just check a box and say, I understand the risk. I don't care. Like, I'm fine. I'm going to use a non-Synology drive in this, so please don't 
give me these errors, but here we are, no checkbox that I can see to do this. Now, maybe in the future, Synology will say, hey, let's go ahead and create a checkbox to solve this problem. And, you know, I think that would be a fair middle ground for people who go, I understand that I'm not using a Synology supported drive. I am fine with that. I'm an adult. Just let me check the box and not have these errors. The problem is they don't have that box and therefore you have these storage errors. So it never looks right. So if I were to fill this with drives that, well, were all unverified, that would just be even more annoying. And it just kind of looks like I got a broken system. I'm hoping Synology at least adds that feature, but in the short term, and this is where I want to be very clear, if you plan to buy these, also plan on buying the Synology drives. One thing I will admit though that I'd like is that it works at all because some platforms may not allow to do this. It does at least let me use that drive as a spare if I were waiting on another replacement. So I will give them that as a checkbox. They didn't force me not to use it. They just forced me to kind of look at an error message on the system. But leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this topic and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.